classification of compounds is aromatic, non-aromatic, and anti-aromatic. Here is a set of rules that we are going to follow to classify the compounds as aromatic, non-aromatic, and anti-aromatic. In order for a compound to be aromatic, first it needs to be cyclic or polycyclic, and that cyclic structure or polycyclic structure should be planar. And second rule is that all of the atoms within the ring structure should be either sp2 hybridized or sp hybridized meaning that there should not be any sp3 atoms within the ring structure. So no sp3 atoms. But remember, heteroatoms such as oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur can make itself sp2 hybridized by donating a lone pair of electrons towards the ring structure. And rule number three is that the total number of electrons that is participating in delocalization, basically that is present within the ring structure, should be equal to 4 and plus 2, where n is an integer having value 0, 1, 2, etc. And this is called as Huckel's rule. So basically, Huckel's rule states that you should only have odd pairs of electrons participating in delocalization. Let's substitute the value for n here. Let's put n equal to 0 here. So it's going to be 4, 4 times 0 plus 2. That is going to be equivalent to 2 electrons. So when you say 2 electrons, it's going to be 1 electron pair. And let's substitute n equals 1 here. So 4 times 1 plus 2, that is going to be equal to 6 electrons. When you say 6 electrons, that's going to be equal to 3 electron pair. And then let's put n equals to 2 now. So that's going to be equal to 10 electrons. When you say 10 electrons, it's going to be a 5 electron pair. So when you say a compound follows Huckel's rule, it needs to have an odd number of electron pair. Now, for a compound to be aromatic, it needs to follow all of these three rules. If one of these two rules is disobeyed by a compound, then it's going to fall under the category of non-aromatic compounds. But if rule number one and two are obeyed by the compound, but rule number three is not obeyed by the compound, basically, if it doesn't follow Huckel's rule, instead of 4n plus 2 system, if it's going to be a 4n system, which means if it's going to have even pairs of electrons, let's say that you have two electron pairs or four electron pairs in the compound, then it's going to fall under the category of anti-aromatic compounds. Applying all of these three rules, we can clearly see that benzene is an aromatic compound. So here is the cyclic structure that we have, and all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized, and therefore you can have the pi uninterrupted pi electron cloud. Also, when you calculate the total number of electrons that is participating in uh, delocalization, you can clearly see that it is equal to six electrons, which is basically three pairs of electrons. So this is three pairs of electrons. And in order for a compound to obey Huckel's rule, for it to be aromatic, it needs to have an odd number of electron pairs. So that's what we have. And therefore, benzene is an aromatic compound. We are going to apply the rules that we have talked for aromaticity and find whether these compounds are aromatic or non-aromatic or anti-aromatic. Let's take a look into the first compound. This compound right here is a, has got a cyclic structure, but one or more of these atoms right here are sp3 hybridized, and therefore rule number one is disobeyed, and therefore this is not an aromatic compound. The next structure hasn't even got a cyclic structure, and therefore rule number one is disobeyed, and therefore this should also be non-aromatic. The next two structures are furan and pyrrole. So this one right here is furan and this is pyrrole or pyrrole. In furan, we have got oxygen and this oxygen has got two lone pairs of electrons. And out of these two lone pairs of electrons, one of this is going to be parallel to the p orbital and therefore this is going to participate in resonance. So this structure right here is cyclic. And all of these atoms, all of these carbons right here are sp2 hybridized and oxygen can make itself sp2 hybridized by donating one of these lone pairs of electrons to the um, ring structure. So rule number two is also obeyed. When it comes to rule number three, uh, it is going to have three pairs of electrons. So two pairs of electrons are right here and then oxygen has donated one pairs of electrons. So totally there are going to be three pairs of electrons, three electron pairs, and it follows Huckel's rule, which is a four and plus two system, which is equal to a total of six electrons. So all of these three rules are obeyed by furan, and therefore this is going to be aromatic. And when it comes to pyrrole, 
The same thing works here as well. But here, instead of oxygen, we do have nitrogen, but which has got only one lone pair of electron. And this one lone pair of electron is parallel to the p orbital. And therefore, it can still participate in electron delocalization. So yes, the structure is cyclic and all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized or can make itself sp2 hybridized basically the nitrogen can make itself sp2 hybridized and also it follows huckel's rule where again it has three electron pairs right totally six electrons which is participating in delocalization so this should also be aromatic the next compound that we have here is cyclooctatetraene and you can see that the structure is cyclic and all of these atoms right here are sp2 hybridized, but these atoms are not on the same plane. So rule number one, although it is cyclic, it is not a planar compound and therefore this should be a non-aromatic compound because it has disobeyed the first rule. So it is a non-aromatic compound. Here we have three sets of compounds again. Uh, so this one right here is cyclopentadiene. And you can see that the structure is cyclic, but this carbon right here is an sp3 carbon, right? And therefore, this should be a non-aromatic compound. So this is non-aromatic. But what about the cation and the anion? In the anion, these electrons can be donated under the ring structure. So the, all of these atoms can be uh, sp2 hybridized. So it follows rule number one, which is cyclic, and rule number two. All of these atoms can be sp2 hybridized and when it comes to rule number three it has got a total of three electron pairs and therefore it obeys rule number three as well so this should be a aromatic compound when it comes to the cation yes it is cyclic and all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized but rule number three is disobeyed because it has got only two electron pairs. So basically this is a foreign system and therefore this should be anti-aromatic. Here we have two four-membered ring structures. This one right here is cyclobutadiene. And yes, the structure is cyclic, right? And all of these atoms right here are sp2 hybridized. So rule number two is obeyed. But when it comes to the number of electrons, you only have two electron pairs. So this falls under the category of foreign system. And therefore, this is anti-aromatic. Let's go on to the next structure. The next structure has got uh, an sp3 carbon. So this is an sp3 carbon. And therefore, this should be a non-aromatic compound. Let's focus on these three structures right here. This first structure right here has got an sp3 carbon. Although, this is, although the structure is cyclic, this carbon is sp3 hybridized. So rule number two is disobeyed. And therefore, this should be a non-aromatic compound. So this is non-aromatic. Let's go on to the next structure. The next structure, this is a cyclic structure. So rule number one is obeyed. And when it comes to rule number two, yes, these two atoms are sp2 hybridized. This can make itself the, this carbon ion can make itself sp2 hybridized by donating its electrons towards the ring. So rule number two is also obeyed. And when it comes to rule number three, it has got only two um, electron pairs. So basically this is a foreign system and not a foreign plus two system. So this should be an anti-aromatic compound. Let's go on to the next one. So this is a cyclic structure. So rule number one is obeyed. Rule number two, all of these atoms right here are sp2 hybridized. So rule number two is also obeyed. When it comes to rule number three, it has got one electron pair. So basically it is going to follow the Huckel's rule if you're going to put n equals zero, right? So there are two electrons here. So one and two electrons. So if you put n equal to 0, the equation will be solved. So this should be an aromatic compound because all of these three rules are followed by the compound. Here we have some bicyclic structures. So let's take a look into this first compound right here. So all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized, right? And nitrogen can make itself sp2 hybridized by donating its lone pair of electrons. So rule number one is obeyed. Rule number two is also obeyed. And then when it comes to the Huckel's rule, so you have one, two, three, four. And with the nitrogen donating its electrons, 
um, it's going to be five electron pairs. So it's an odd number of electron pairs and therefore this is going to fall under the category of 4n plus 2 system. So therefore this should be aromatic. Let's go on to the next structure. So yes, cyclic, it's a bicyclic compound. And all of these atoms right here are sp2 hybridized. So rule number one and rule number two are obeyed by this compound. When it comes to rule number three, it only has got four electron pairs. So four electron pairs, which is even number of electron pairs, it falls under the category of four n system. So this should be anti-aromatic. Let's go on to the last compound. Yes, uh, this is a bicyclic structure and all of these atoms right here are sp2 hybridized and when it comes to rule number three so there are only four electron pairs and therefore this should also come under the category of foreign system which is going to be an anti-aromatic compound here we have cycloheptatriene this compound right here is cycloheptatriene as you can see, there are uh, three double bonds. And one of these atoms, this atom right here, is sp3 hybridized. So therefore, it cannot be an aromatic compound. This should be non-aromatic. When it comes to the cation, the corresponding cation, uh, it is a cyclic structure. So rule number one is obeyed. And rule number two, where all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized, it is also obeyed. And when it comes to rule number three, there are totally three pairs of electrons. So basically this is a uh, four and plus two system where the number of electrons is equivalent to six electrons or it's equivalent to three electron pairs, right? So this should be an aromatic compound. And the, when it comes to the corresponding anion, the anion, you have two more electrons. So therefore this falls under the category of four and system. So there are four electron pairs so it falls under the category of foreign system and therefore this should be anti-aromatic.